I quit social media for 30 days and it changed me forever. Well, that's what the title says, but in actual fact, I've quitted social media for more than a year and counting. Ever since then, I don't think I'll ever go back. Hi everyone, Toso Caveman here. I post videos challenging myself to learn as many skills as possible while talking about various interesting topics to motivate you to become a better version of yourself than before. While we discuss on today's topic, I'll be learning a new pen spinning skill called the Infinity. Do learn it together with me while listening to my commentary. I first got into social media when Friendster first came out. Back then, it was the hottest social media out there and everyone around me was using it. Just like how we all jump onto the boat for anything nowadays, I got myself into it due to a fear of missing out. Back then, it was pretty wholesome as my friends and I would use it to keep ourselves connected and it was a platform that helped to get us know each other more, which is what a social media aims to do. We would wish each other happy birthdays, create profiles for our interest groups and personalize our profiles to make it look cooler. As time passed, Friendster wasn't able to keep up with the competition and slowly dropped off. Just like how I first got into Friendster, I FOMO'd into the new talk of the town social media, Facebook, and eventually, Instagram. Instagram was a social media where we post pictures and stories of our daily lives. With that, it comes with a very deadly attribute, likes. At first when I started using it, I didn't concern myself so much with it. I post whatever that I like, I don't care about the lighting or if it looks aesthetic. I would see a cute puppy, take a photo, and just post a picture of it with a caption, cute. If I went out for the occasional meal at restaurants, I would snap photos of all the food that I ordered and post each photo into individual posts with no captions back to back. During this time, you weren't able to post multiple photos into a single post yet. But as time passed and I added more friends, I started to concern myself with this dangerous thing, the number of likes. If the photo that I post wasn't receiving enough likes, I would start to concern myself with questions like, was this photo aesthetic enough? Should I have posted at a different time? Am I not good enough? This brings me to my next point. Social media became a comparison game. Using social media was supposed to help you stay connected with your friends, but instead, it became a toxic environment where you constantly compare the number of followers and likes you have with your friends. We will focus too much on trying to make a photo aesthetic and spend way too much time thinking of captions that we hope will catch the attention of others. All these efforts that we put in, just so we can see a high number of likes and comments. If you have a lower average number of likes than your friends, you will start questioning your existence and your self-esteem will drop to all-time lows. If you really think about it, it all came from just a couple of numbers on a screen. Somehow, we tie ourselves on whether we are good enough to the number of likes we got on our posts. Instead of using social media to keep in contact with your friends, it may bring you guys apart due to this tiring comparison game. Due to the ease of how social media can keep us and our friends connected from all over the world, we start to over-update ourselves. I remember scrolling through Instagram every day, making sure that I did not miss a single post, just so I can assure myself that I am kept updated with my friends' lives. It soon became a habit, and I will feel a strong sense of missing out if I missed a single day of not scrolling through all the posts of the day. As I look back now, I can't seem to understand why I would dedicate such a huge amount of time to updating myself what my friends are eating, where they are going for their holidays, did they cut their hair, or have they gained weight. With how life works, many friends would come and go. Feeding myself with all this information of friends that I would never interact with again doesn't seem to get me anywhere. If I were to use social media to just update myself with friends that I really care about, I would probably have less than 10 people that I would follow. This brings closely to my next point, wasting my time. Using social media took away a huge amount of my energy and time, ranging from caring about the captions that I should put when I post to scrolling through my daily feed to update myself on friends that I won't talk to ever again. I suppose it's easy to say these things now, but back then, it wasn't. I was trapped in the webs of social media, and the younger me wasn't willing to read this feeling of missing out. As much as I already know that social media was a waste of time, I would rather continue wasting my time than to be unknowing of what's going on around me. When I started to quit social media more than a year back, life went on as usual, but this time, I have more time to work on things that I truly care about, and one of it now would be this channel. Every time after meeting new friends, we all have a habit of exchanging social media with the excuse of wanting to stay in contact. If it's after a school camp, we will exchange social media with 30 or more people at once, even with people we interacted very little with, or none at all. In this instance, are we really just wanting to stay in contact? Or do we just find it hard to admit to ourselves that we are playing the followers game, but we want to increase that number as much as possible? I suppose having a higher followers count will give some sort of self-validation, but at the end of the day, that's really all it gives, an egoistic trait that doesn't provide any value at all. It took me a while to overcome this toxic thought, and it was something that I would never go back after deciding to quit social media. If there's any value that followers count can bring, I would say, if you have a business. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter. Really. You may have heard of this saying, if you didn't post, 
it didn't happen. With this quote, I'm sure you can think of that one friend that you have that will post about everything he or she is doing. You probably didn't talk to that friend anymore, but you seem to know everything about him or her, ranging from whether they changed their hair color, got a new pair of shoes, met a celebrity, or went on holiday. That friend can't seem to not update about literally everything that they are doing. As a viewer, I suppose there's nothing wrong with it, as it can provide some sort of entertainment. But to whoever that is present in their Instagram stories, I'm sure that at times, they would rather have that moment private, just between themselves. With every post, it takes away from the full experience. If I'm on a holiday, I will take the occasional photos so that I can look back at it in the distant future. Other than that, I would rather just stand there, taking that scenic view of Mount Fuji, breathe in the fresh air, instead of thinking about what filter to use, what captions to type, or what kind of photos to take that will bring the most likes. With all the points that I've raised, this point would be the most important takeaway to me. As much as social media helped us to stay connected with friends, it takes away real connections. We spend too much time trying to stay in contact and keeping updated with people we don't care about, that we started to drift away from those around us. We know more about the likes and dislikes of someone that we didn't talk to in years than our loved ones that stuck by us ever since we are a little kid. Spend more time updating yourself with your loved ones than your social media ones. As I look back at the past year of being free from social media, I regretted not having started this earlier. With the times that I spent caring about the number of likes and followers, to the constant scrolling of my daily feed to update myself with my friend's life, I could have dedicated them to improving myself, whether it be picking up a new skill, honing old ones, or working towards my goals. But we all have to realize that life is a journey of constant learning. We have to experience the failures ourselves before we learn. There's also the unsaid consequence of becoming more confident after quitting social media. I no longer pressure myself with the feats that others achieve. And not being updated with what's around got me more curious of my friends' life when I do meet them. Making me more confident when talking to people, simply because I am less updated which is how I feel should be the way we connect with others in real life. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a like, share this video with your friends, and subscribe for more interesting content like this video.